want to start off this conversation by asking you to reflect and share with us to talk a little bit about what love means to you. <laughs> I do believe that um, the whole point of the liberation movement here in this place called America has been run uh, based on love. Um, Zora Neale Hurston said the greatest emotion was fear. And I remember, you know, in teaching her, uh, and she said that in an essay, and I said, I disagree. I think the greatest emotion is love. Uh, love because that you will do anything if you truly love someone. And I think the whole mo motion and movement of Brother Malcolm was based on love. Uh, the love that he had for people. But most especially, uh, the love that he learned about himself when he began to love himself, um, when he began truly to look at himself in love, a conversation about how you must love yourself uh, before you even begin doing anything uh, in a movement. I saw uh, uh, the brothers take a brother who was on drugs and clean him up. <laughs> you know, I mean, 24 hours, you know, in a room. And that was not done because people were mad at him, that was done through love. Uh, a deep respect that that was a human being underneath all that heroin. Um, and that's what Malcolm saw when he looked at us, you know. He really saw um, a really interesting group of people in America. And he had an enormous amount of patience uh, with us because we constantly railed out against him. Every time he said something, we had a response. But I remember also watching Brother Malcolm on the idiot box, that is television. And he was sitting there with PhDs. I mean, you know, like people like Dr. Doc, this and Dr. that and Dr. whatever, whatever. And he leaned, I remember one day he was leaning back, listening to them, and then he opened his mouth and began to speak, and he massacred all of them. Um, you know, and, and I remember getting on the subway going to work, and those of us from New York City know that every time a woman got on the subway going to work and it was crowded early in the morning, some guy was leaning up against you rubbing you. Oh yeah, you do. You know, you don't want to admit it. But it up, rubbed against you. And I remember that we would kind of like twist and turn and wouldn't dare say anything. You know, like, you know, kind of move away. But I remember also after you saw Malcolm on, on the Idiot Box on Sunday, Monday morning, you, you turned towards that person and said, you better stop that. Did you hear what Malcolm said? And the guy would move uh, fastly fast, you know, out of the way. His love was so deep, my brothers and sisters, that he said, I will say out loud what you're afraid to say. That's what he did. He told the world what we were afraid to say, because we were all punks when it came about to about talking about race. I mean, you know, you know, people were still calling everybody niggas, you know what I mean? People were doing all kinds of weird things, but this man said, I love you enough I will tell the world exactly what you're thinking, and they can blame me, they can hate me, and you can revel back and lean back and go out into the world and say, oh, I'm okay because Malcolm said it. I mean, that's what we did. That's exactly what we did until we got more insight into this love. My dear sister, the difficulty I have sometimes with young people who always move on theory, is that they don't love. That the theory is always there. I ask questions in a classroom, they got it down fact, you know, they give it back to you, boom, 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 but they don't love anybody. They don't love anybody, but they do say they love that theory, that as if that theory will change the bloody world. That theory's been there a hell of a long time. It ain't gonna change anything. What will change, finally, is that we look at each other and begin to understand what it truly means to love each other. Not in some uh, ridiculous way with chocolates, you know, and with champagne, but in the way that we, as Duke Ellison said, before you kneel down to pray, right? You know, before you kneel down to pray, you got to forgive. You know, and I have had to forgive myself for what I said about Malcolm in those early years. I've had to forgive myself, you know, how I looked with disdain on people who didn't understand Malcolm finally. I had to forgive myself when I truly at some point um, felt superior because I didn't understand what he was talking about. I've seen a lot of innovation and creativity being used with technology 
to foster people building relationships offline. Yeah. In fact, we've seen that with the Black Lives Matter movement, yeah. right? That yeah. it's grown much more beyond a hashtag. Yeah. But it's facilitated people mm -hmm. self-organizing, mm -hmm. coming together, celebrating one another, celebrating where we come from, celebrating how we got here, celebrating our collective vision of where we're headed together. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate those things that you lay out. Mm -hmm. Because in particular, we also know that technology is a medium that is monitored, that mm -hmm. is surveilled. Right. Right. And especially as black people we continue to take ownership right. and, and begin to use technology in a way that fosters and facilitates movement building. But it allows certain people to be spotted. Of course. And so one of the, one of the last things that some of us talked about <laughs> is that the whole idea of non-leadership. Of what leadership? Non-leadership. You know, uh, the whole idea of committees, you know, and the whole idea is that the same person every time speaking out loud. Introduce humor into what we said. You couldn't get up on stage for an hour and be so serious without introducing some humor. So, you know, you learn how to tell jokes at the very beginning because he did that. And so I would tell a joke about the first, the first black pilot in America. Right? It happened right after World War II. It happened in New York City. It happened at LaGuardia Airport. People got on the plane. And the cockpit door was open. They looked in there. Was a black pilot sitting in there. Well, the people sat down and got very nervous that there was a black pilot. You know, just like today, you see a, people get nervous when they see a woman at the, you know, up there as a pilot. And so they sat down and pushed the little button. And at that time, they weren't they weren't flight attendants. The stu they said stewardess, stewardess, stewardess. Uh, 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 uh. Is that a Negro in the cockpit? And the stewardess' name was Janie. She said, oh, just a minute, people. And she turned off the button. She went inside. She said, Jack, Jack, I told you. You should have closed the door. Now, people are upset. So therefore, you know, we have, you have to get on the intercom and say something. He said, Janie, don't worry about a thing. I can do that. So they closed the cockpit door. You know, he gets on the intercom. He says, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Captain Jack Jones. I am your pilot for our trip to LA. But before we begin this trip, let me tell you just a little bit about myself. I am a graduate of Harvard University. I'm also a graduate of Yale University. I'm also a graduate of MIT. I'm also a graduate of Oxford University. And during World War II, I taught all of the pilots how to fly. So if you just settle down and calm down, I will see if I can get this big motherfucker off the ground. demonstration, lifting your voice to say Black Lives Matter. Can you stand up? <laughs> now, those of you standing recognize, recognize and acknowledge that the reason that we're here today is because of freedom fighters like Sister Sonia, Brother Malcolm, Brother Mark, can you raise your left fist? Mm. Okay. All right. And if, with your left fist raised, if you commit to continue to build leadership, to build collectives, to advance our vision together, and to continue to celebrate everywhere that we've been and all the places that we still have to go, can you say, we love you, Malcolm? Yeah. But also, we will work and organize Malcolm. Yeah. I mean, I want, I want you all to love him, right? But you love him abstractly. You know what I mean? You know, no. You, you love him by working. You love him by listening to people. You love him by committing yourself to one project maybe a year that you will complete and finish for the betterment of yourselves and this country. I mean, you got to love people, people, you know? It's our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love.